Why do you worry? That's a good question. Jesus asks that question. And uh, we're going to look in the passage where he asks that question. But before we answer that question, I want to consider this. Two guys are walking down the road. One's a little older than the other guy. And the younger guy is telling him that, you know, as soon as he gets out of high school, uh, he's going to be uh, entering a trade. And the older gentleman then says, well, then what? He said, well, then I'm going to make a lot of money. He says, well, then what? He said, well, once I make a lot of money, I'm going to get a nice car. And then he says, well, then what? He said, well, maybe I'll find a girlfriend. And then he says, then what? And he says, well, well, well then maybe I'll get married. And he said, well, then what? And he said, well, then we'll probably have kids. He said, well, then what? Well, we'll probably buy a house. He said, then what? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll probably grow old together. Then what? He said, well, I'll probably retire. <laughs> he said, well, then what? I'll probably die. <laughs> and then he said, then what? Then what? We are so preoccupied with life that we often neglect eternity. There are so many worries and cares of this life that people struggle with and, and are worried about all these different things in life that sometimes we just put out of our minds that there's something even more than this life. We have so many worries in life. Two things people worry about, I believe, the most. I think everything falls under these two categories in life. They worry about life. They worry about their health, their emotional stability, their relationships, just about life. They worry about life. Usually, it's a worry is generated by a fear of the unknown about life, about life itself. The second thing is about money, and not so much money as it is the stuff, but stuff. All stuff seems to be able to be bought with money. And, and there's this worry that I won't have enough stuff or money. Now, in some third world countries, you worry about, will I have enough to even have enough food for tomorrow or the next day? And, and so they worry about stuff, stuff. I think everything in life, our, all of our worries come down to these two categories. In some way, I worry about life and I worry about my money. Now, this is what I was going to do. I was going to ask, how many of you here worry? <laughs> and it would have been easier to ask how many don't worry. So let, let me do this. Since all of us worry, everybody put up your hand. Put up your hand. Everybody, everybody, leave it up there for a moment. Leave it up, leave it up. Now, as soon as you can identify the one thing you're worried about today, drop your hand. The one thing you know that you're worried about today, drop your hand. So, all right, people are still holding their hands up. They may hold them up all service. It may take some people a little while to figure out what it is that they're worried about. Because the topic today is about, and whatever you're worried about falls into one of these two categories. It's either about life itself, relationships and people. It's a, just something in general of life. Or it's about money or what money will do and all that kind of thing. So it falls in those two categories. Jesus addresses both of these categories in our passage today. In Luke 12, he says, he starts out, and he told them this parable. Now, I'm not going to preach the parable. I'm just going to read the parable. This is our scripture reading for today. So here we go. The ground of a certain man produced a good crop. Life is good. He's been blessed. All right? So he wants us to consider our blessings. God blesses this man. He's a farmer, and he's got great crop, and he's making it a, taking it a great haul. And it says, and he thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. So he says, said to himself, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and I will build bigger ones. There I will store all my grain and my goods. He then says, and I'll say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. Life is so good. But God said, you fool. This very night, your life will be demanded from you. 
then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? It's a very thought-provoking parable that the Lord gives that uh, we spend all of our lives worrying about and trying to accumulate stuff and, and have a good life, an easy life, the, have a good retirement at the end and, and all of that. We're so worried about that. And then he says, but uh, God snuffs them out short. Who then gets everything? He makes an application to this parable. And he says in the very next verse, this is how it will be with anyone. Now what? I'm in the anyone. You're in the anyone. Everybody's in the anyone. This is how... So he's saying this to you. This is how it will be for you when you store up all the things, trying to cover all your bases so you don't have to worry, all the things of, of this life for himself, but he is not rich toward God. When we worry, we first, first of all consider all the blessings we already have and then think, and especially we who are Christians, how I am so blessed and I have riches toward God. Toward God. The second thing we need to do is not just consider our blessings, but consider your worries. Consider your worries. Here's what, then Jesus said to the disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry. Now we've all, every one of us knows that we worry. And Jesus tells us, do not worry. Now we know immediately when I'm worrying that I am doing exactly the opposite of what Jesus is telling me to do. The Bible has a word for that. We're sinning against God. Wow. Wow. Wait a minute, Pastor. You mean when I'm worried for my children? Yep. When I'm worried for my car, car payment, house payment? Yep. When, I, when I'm worried, you, you pick it. Yep. He says, do not worry. He says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Oh, wait a minute. About what? About life. Everything that's under that branch that you've identified, everything under that branch, do not worry. Okay, do not worry about that. And then he says, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life and what you will eat or about your body, what you will wear, about the things, the stuff, you know, all the stuff you have in life. Don't worry about your stuff. We worry about our stuff, and when we worry about our stuff, you know what we do? We buy an insurance plan for it. I buy an insurance plan. Recently, we bought an appliance. They said, you know, for another $200, you can insure this for a I'm so worried about my stuff that it might go bad that I, they want, they sell me an insurance plan to cover it. Should it, are you kidding me? I, I'm so hung up on my stuff, my stuff, that I got to cover it with an insurance plan. Hmm. Hmm. Jesus said, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Life is more than food and the body is more than clothes. Consider what you're worrying about. He says, consider next your God. This is where it really gets good. By considering your God, he wants you, first of all, to consider the birds. The birds. His eye is on the sparrow. This is so perfect. Consider the ravens, he says here in this passage. They do not sow or reap they have no storerooms or barns. Oh, that takes us all the way back to that parable. The man who accumulated so much that he had to build bigger barns to store all of his stuff. He said, but look at the ravens. They don't do any of that. They're not workaholics. They're not chasing their own tails. They're not in the rat race of life. He's saying, listen, just look at, consider the ravens. God feeds them. How much more valuable are you than birds? Now, I know in our society today, it's becoming politically correct to be, have a value of animals over human life, but I'm going to tell you what, God values you over all animal bird life. You are valuable to God. He will feed you. In Psalm 37, David says, 
I have been young and I am now old and I have never seen the righteous forsaken of God nor his children go begging for bread. God will always provide for your need. That's so important. The Bible never says he will provide for all your wants. <laughs> but he will provide for all of your needs. And he's saying, listen, the birds aren't worried about their next meal. The birds know that the next meal is going to be provided by God. So I don't have to worry about what's going to happen because God, God who takes care of the birds is going to take care of me. I'm far more valuable than the birds to God. So much so that he sent his son into the world to die for me and purchase the gift of eternal life that I might have life with him forever. The point is God feeds and he cares for them. So at this point, Jesus asks this question. Here, he's building up to this question. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? You can't. In fact, worry probably agitates you so much it takes an hour off your life. <laughs> I'm sure some social scientists have already calculated and figured that out, that worrying is not a plus, it's a minus, and it takes time off, not adds time on. And the whole point that he's saying here, here of you by worrying can, can add a single hour to his life. You can't. Worrying never changes anything. So you went to the doctor, and the doctor said, oh, I'll give you a call on, on, your, on the results of your test. So you go home and you're worried. You're worried about, okay, I'm going to have something terrible. You know, uh, I'm going to have cancer. I'm going to have something really terrible. And so you wait, and the phone rings, but you're not there, and it's recorded on the message, and it says, oh, please call me back because I got good news and bad news. Now you're really worried. Not about the good news. You're worried about the bad news. What are you? When this worry kicks in, what are you? You are afraid. At the basis of, fear, of worry is fear. You are afraid that the doctor is going to say something negative about the future. And so you start to hypothesize. You start to think of all the things that potentially could be. But so far, there's nothing real about any of it, is there? You don't know. You don't know what the test has resulted in. So he calls and, and, and he says, listen, um, when you get, get the phone call back, you, you connect with the doctor, and, and the doctor says, hey, listen, uh, you want the good news or the bad news first? You say, well, give me the good news. <laughs> now maybe you better have the bad news. <laughs> well, the bad news is you have a small tumor, but it can be treated. Well, that's the bad news. What's the good news? <laughs> Well, the good news is your insurance is going to cover it all. <laughs> and so all of a sudden, everything you've been worried about, you didn't change a thing. It didn't change one thing. But you have been going through all this emotional ups and downs, and, and you've been all contorted out of shape. You're not thinking rationally. You're not acting rationally. Your mind is so preoccupied. You're, you're neglecting everything else. And Jesus says, who of you by worry can change anything in life? And the answer is no one. You can't do it. You can't do it. Second question he asks. This is really powerful. Since you cannot do this little thing, you can't change a anything by your worry. Why do you worry about the rest of life? He says, if you can't add just an hour, why do, you, why do you worry about anything in life that you might think you can... It's not going to change anything. Give it up. Just give it up. He turns his direction now. He says, now consider the flowers. And he says, consider how the lilies grow. They do not labor nor spin. I tell you, not even Solomon in all the splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you? Listen, God will take care of you. 
He'll take care of you. Then he adds this little line, O you of little faith. Now this is key. This is key. Worry, worry causes you to doubt that God is in control and that God is good and he only does good to his people. It makes you doubt that. And because you doubt that, you don't exercise faith that God who is in control, he cares for me, he loves me, he will take care of this problem, this event, whatever it is in my life, God will take care of it. I will trust him and I will believe in him. He may not do what I'm wanting to do, wanting him to do. He may not jump through my hoops, but he will do what is right and what is just, what is good, what is going to bring glory to him. And in the end, when I look back on it, I will say, God did a wonderful, marvelous thing. Why in the world did I ever worry about that? That's exactly what's going to happen. It takes me to trust God for whatever it is that has me worried. Just trust God. Trust God. See, Jesus says you need to really consider your heart in this whole matter. Don't set your heart on what you will eat or drink. That's what the guy did that built the big barns and was storing everything up. He said, listen, I have plenty. I'll eat, drink, and be merry. What? what? He had set his heart on the stuff, but the stuff could be taken away in a moment or your life could be taken away in a moment. And what has worry done about any of that? Nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. He says, do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. You see, what you need is a worry-free heart. You got to get the worry out of your heart. And yeah, it's because when you have a worry-filled heart, you're like the pagans who, he says, for the pagan world runs after such things. That's what they do. They have a worry-filled heart. And your father knows what you need. He knows what you need. And don't you believe that your father in heaven who knows what you need, who is willing to sacrifice his son for you, at any moment could supply you with what you need and take care of you? Of course you do. It's just when that seed of doubt enters in, I have this fear, then I go to the category of worry, it agitates my spirit, I fret, I have anxiety, and it just pulls me down. Pulls me down. Instead, he says, have a seeker's heart. But seek his kingdom. Try to live through whatever circumstance you're going through, with a kingdom view in mind, God is on the throne. It, this, this whole universe, he reigns. It's his kingdom. And his will will be done. You know, we pray that in the Lord's Prayer. Thy will be done. Do we mean it? God, whatever it is your will, I, I believe that I can trust you. I don't have to worry about this. It is yours. You're in control. You are God. I'm just a little creature, a speck on this planet. God, but you, you've made me your son. You value me highly. You are going to do what is best for me. I'm going to seek your kingdom. I'm going to seek your face. I'm, I'm going to seek you out in all of this. But seek his kingdom. And all these things will be given you as well. Whatever, whatever it is you need, he will give you along the way. Instead of worrying, start seeking. Do not be afraid. Oh, see, I think fear, fear is the seed that starts the worry. I'm, I'm afraid I'm, I'm going to come out on the short end of something and that makes me worried. I'm afraid something bad is going to happen. That makes me worry. I, I'm afraid. It's fear. But in Timothy says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And so instead of living in fear, I need to live in power, love, and a sound mind, all given to me by God. So I seek the kingdom of God, and I get a fearless heart. A fearless heart. Do not be afraid, little flock, for the Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. I'm a, kingdom, I, I'm a citizen of, of the kingdom of heaven. I'm not in it yet, 
One day, when Jesus returns and sets up his millennial kingdom, thousand-year reign, I will be there. I'll be in it. But I'm already, he's been pleased to give me a future kingdom. He's been pleased to give you a future kingdom too. So don't be afraid. You're already part of a great thing. He's been pleased to give you the kingdom. Have a kingdom heart. Have a kingdom heart. So now I want you to answer the question. She said, you kind of, man, you, you've really hit me in a lot of places. Why do you worry? Can I give you the number one answer to this? You ready for it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Isn't that right? Why are you worried? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> this is the usual answer. I just can't give it up. Ever said that? I just can't give it up. Here I am. I'm, I'm fretting. I'm worrying about my kids. I'm worrying job, my neighbor. I'm worrying about you know my paying my taxes. I'm worried about whatever it is, and I just can't give it up. As soon as I think I've given it up, it hits me again. That's exactly. I I try to stop worrying, but it just keeps coming back. Are you with me on this? All right, I think you are. You know how this works. So how do I give up worry? Come on, how do I do that? Pastor, if you could give me a way to do that, I could double my offering, because, boy, I'll tell you what. <laughs> how do you give up worry? Jesus kept saying, consider, consider, consider. It starts up here, folks. You have to change your thinking toward riches. You've got to change your thinking about your stuff. You've got to change your thinking about, like, my house, my car. I've got to start thinking of all the stuff. I've got to start thinking. I've got to change my thinking about that. I've got to change my thinking about life, my health, and my relationships, and my circumstances. I've got to change my attitude, my thinking. So, uh, Proverbs 23, 7 says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If I think about all this stuff and everything, it's going to pull me down. But if I set my affections on things above, if I seek the kingdom of God, it will pull me up. You've got to change. First of all, if, if you're find, constantly finding yourself worrying, you've got to change your thinking towards riches and life. You've got to change your thinking towards worry. When I was a child, I, I, um, my older brother introduced me to horror movies. Uh, I was a little too young at the time, but he was babysitting and he wanted to see Frankenstein. And here I was just a little tiny guy and I'm watching Frankenstein and that night I'm having nightmares. <laughs> Frankenstein, Boris Karloff is coming to get me. <laughs> Some of you remember the real old Frankenstein. All right. And, and, and I, I was worried, see, about my sleeping pattern. When I wake up, I go back to sleep, I was back in the same nightmare. Are you kidding me? Finally, I said, here's what I did. I got to change the channel. <laughs> and I got to think about something else. It is with worry. What do you do? What do you do with worry? I've got to change the channel. I got to stop focusing on the worry. I got to replace it. I got to replace it. I got to replace it and say, hey, God feeds. God takes care of. So I got to change the channel. I got to change my thinking and set my thinking towards God and not the worry. I got to quit thinking about the stuff, the life. And I got to focus on God and focus on God, focus more on God. Not only do we have to consider, but the text says you have to seek. Seek is changing your search. What are you searching for? You've got to search positive things. Now, the passage says, but seek the kingdom of God. In a kingdom, there, there is a king. He's, he's the one who's over everything. And there are the subjects. That's me. And then there's the realm over which the king is Lord over the realm. I've got to seek the kingdom of God. I've got to say, whoa, Lord, I'm your subject. I want to be loyal to you, Lord, 
in the realm where you want me to be, and you don't want me to be in the realm of worry. So I got to get out of that realm. So I start searching what gets me out of the realm of worry. Well, this is what the Bible tells us to do. <laughs> if you go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Whatsoever is true, true. Not what I have hypothesized in my mind that the doctor might be saying, calling me to tell me I have cancer, but really what, what he's saying is it's really nothing really that major will be able to take care of it and even insurance has got it covered. I, I got to deal with facts, not what I hypothesize, speculate. Whatever is noble, it's of kingly origin, man, it's towards God. It is right, it is just, it is pure. Whatever is lovely, he says, whatever is admirable. If there's anything excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Change the channel of what you think and your attitude. You change it, you change it up here. You focus on God. You get away from all the junk. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. This is not a half-hearted adventure. With all my heart, I'm seeking him, not me. It's all about you, Lord. It's really not about me. Now listen. Final thing I want to suggest here is that you pray which is you just talk to God about it. God, I've got a problem here. They didn't give me the answer when the phone rang on the answering machine. They, they only told me that there's good news and bad news. God, I'm, I, I'm prone to wander from you and worry about this and disobey that you said stop worrying, don't worry. Uh, so God, give me, give me the strength, the power in order to triumph over that. Talk to God about it. Talk to God about it. In fact, Philippians, just the verses before where he said to think all these good things, he says, do not be anxious. Some translations say, don't worry, don't fret. Do not be anxious about anything. That covers it all. But in everything, everything that would be prone, make you prone to worry, by prayer and petition. Prayer is a general term. Petition is you make a definite request. With thanksgiving. Thank you, God, you put me in this circumstance because this has brought me back to you. I'm talking to you. I'm asking to you. With thanksgiving, present your request to God. And then he says this. That, that's, that's, if you meet that condition, and here's the promise. And the peace of God, peace will just flood right into your soul. Which transcends, it goes beyond any understanding. This doesn't make sense. You mean I just pray and I give it over all to God and somehow, poof, it's gone. That's what it says. It's mind-blowing. It goes beyond any understanding. He will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. So this is what I've done today, because you all raised your hands, right? Everybody worries. I have made a worry card. <laughs> Stop worrying on the one side. And I just picked some verses in the Bible that said, don't worry. Do not be anxious about anything from the passage here. Stop worrying. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, from what Jesus said. So do not worry, again, from what Jesus said. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, what Jesus said. And then one more, do not fret. That's the stop worrying side of the card. Worry pops up its ugly head, you get this out, you say, oh, stop worrying. Oh, here on the other side, it says start. <laughs> you just flip the card right over, it says start praying. <gasps> Button everything by prayer and petition, thanksgiving, present your request to God, just what this passage says. Start seeking, but seek first his kingdom, his righteousness, and all these things will be given unto you. Start casting. I haven't covered that one here, but it's start casting. Casting all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. The last one is start trusting. Trust in the Lord. Listen, if you, if you do this, I'm, I'm telling you what, your worry will flee. 
But you say, well, what happens when it comes back? Oh, I just pulled this card out. It's three by five, so you can put it in your pocket. Put it in your pocket. Put it in your purse. Fold it, put it in your wallet. You just stop. You pull it out and you say, stop worrying. If you go through all this, you hear here, you do a quick prayer. You say, God, I'm going to look for you. the silver lining and all this. I'm seeking you. And listen, I'm going to tell myself, I've given it to you. I'm not, I cast it on you. I left it there. I'm not taking it up. It's all yours, Lord. And I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you to take care of this. And you go on your way. And then it raises its ugly head. You pull the card out. Are you getting the drift here? All your life, you've been in the habit of when something happens, you run to worry. So you are in a rut, a worry rut. We're all in it. We're in the worry rut. How do you get out of the worry rut? You use the card like this. You start doing it. You get out of the rut. Guess what happens? Something bumps you in life, puts you back in the rut. So what do you got to do? You got to pull it out. You got to work through it. You got to get out of your worry again. You get out of it. Pretty soon, things hit you in life and you don't go to the worry rut. You're not stuck in it. You're out of it because you've got a new habit in life. You deal with worry in a whole new way, in a Christ-like, biblical way. Because Christ came to give us the abundant life, abundant life, the worry-free life. It's a life of peace, joy, love, gentleness, kindness, self-control. Self-control, I, I, I can do this, I can do this. That's the life he wants us to have. So with all of that, I think we should pray. Let's do that. Father in heaven, you know what it is that's our worries, our concerns, our frustrations. You know what it is that we're fretting about. You know what it is that brings us such high anxiety in our lives. Uh, help us, Lord, to respond as Jesus taught us to respond, that you are in control of everything. You're in the kingdom, the king of the kingdom. And, and that, Lord, you, you, provide, you provide for the birds. You provide for the flowers. You, you provide. And, Lord, you care more about us than any of them. Help us, Lord, to stop our worrying and start praying and communicating with you with thanksgiving and ask specifically for you to intervene when the thing is causing us anxiety. Help us to realize that you truly are on the throne. You are running and operating your universe and that our prayers will change things as you move into action. Help us, Lord, to see this world from your perspective, to be rich towards God, not just rich of the worldly things, as Jesus taught. May we experience the abundant life that Jesus offers to us. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.